this time. I uh, have been looking forward to engaging with you today. Uh, I don't have really a big agenda. Again, the posse, the followers of, uh, of my show, of my work, they will know that I've been sort of experimenting with this particular new uh, YouTube uh, feature. Uh, this is the, the visual equivalent of Twitter Spaces, and uh, it's pretty cool. I still have to kind of figure out exactly how it works, but um, I'm glad you're here. And this time I thought I'd sit on the boat dock and give you a lovely view, show you around uh, just a little bit and enjoy smoking a cigar. So if you got one, light it up. <laughs> so, how are you? I hope you're doing very well. Um, a couple of topics of interest to me today is seeing the announcement um, that there would be formal a formal move to add Ukraine to NATO, which I see as a uh, as a uh, disaster. Actually, um, I see that as something that um, that Putin has, you know, has stated time and again that uh, he would find that absolutely intolerable. He doesn't want hostiles uh, on his border, and slowly the. Um, uh, slowly, the United States, via its NATO uh, puppet, uh, has been annexing states, border states, uh, to to um, to Russia, and now Ukraine is looks like it may be another addition to that. And um, it looks to me like this is going to escalate the war significantly. It also looks to me like it's just you know an obvious uh, effort to engage um, Europe, the armies of Europe in a war with Russia. Uh, and, you know, we, we just get that much closer um, to a world war, or at least a war of the, uh, of the West. Uh, but I'm interested in other things that might be on your mind. Um, again, I'm not afraid to say I don't know. If I don't know, I'll just tell you. I don't know. I don't try not to, you know, wander into topics that I don't know anything about. So um, it's good to see we have people here from Oregon. Um, let's see, uh, what else do we have? Yeah, if you're in the posse, please don't come here as a troll. I'm not interested in, uh, in the trolls. Um, let's see, uh, Ranger. Yeah, Ranger would be down here with me, except that it's a little choppy. The water's a little choppy today. There's a pretty good breeze blowing, and there have been quite a few boats on the lake today. And uh, Ranger lives to attack those waves as they come to shore. So he runs around on the dock here and he jumps into the water uh, in after after those uh, those waves. And uh, of course, I love for him to do that. It's good exercise for him. The problem is that it, it would be very hard to have a meaningful conversation with you with him barking in the background. He has a, a very, you know, um, bass bark. So uh, I think that would make things a little bit difficult. We got William Wilmington, North Carolina here. You know, I wonder if I should do a spaces like at 2 a.m. sometime to engage people who are not uh, in the United States. You know, maybe we have a we have a lot of people who follow from uh, from Asia, some from Africa, uh, a lot in Europe, and that might be a great way. Uh, it might be a great way to do that. Uh, slowly, people are starting to um, to come in. To the chat, somebody's here says I need a wind cover. Yeah, we're trying to figure out a little bit. See, the problem is I'm here and the uh, the tech guys are in Dallas, so my team is in Dallas, and so they send me instructions on stuff that I'm supposed to do. And we were we were playing with a mic the other day. It's a mic that I use when I'm traveling. When you see me doing some of these videos, you know, say uh, you know the ones that I was I was just you know posting where I was in the jungle or I was in an airplane or something, you have you have a, um, a little mic that clips right here and it communicates with this. The problem is it doesn't work on these YouTube Lives for some reasons. We haven't cracked that nut yet, but my, uh, my tech team is tops. They will figure all that out. So I apologize if there's a little bit of wind noise, but I thought you might like, thought you might like the, nice, the nice view here. 
so that you can uh, see something other than just a boring wall. Got people here from uh, Washington State, from Southern California, from Texas. Okay, good. I'm told here that my voice is clear as a bell. It's just that you hear the wind. Well, just think of it as special effects. <laughs> just adds, it just adds a little, adds a little character um, to our meeting um, today. So, got someone here from Tacoma, Washington. Who else is going to join us? Where are you? Cigar is actually just a little bitter. Makes me wonder if I let it get a little bit dry. Newfoundland. You know, my mom's a Canadian. Yes, she is. So I grew up with a slightly different perspective uh, because of that. My father, as we say in the South, my father's from LA, which means lower Alabama. So he's from lower Alabama, from LA. And my mother is a Canadian. She's from Vancouver Island. And uh, so I grew up spending, you know, part of my summers on Vancouver Island. And then in the American South. It was a very interesting uh, mix there. So Newfoundland, uh, the UK is joining us here. Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, Rainier, Oregon, Guatemala, and the Islamic State of Manchester. Yes, indeed. Uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, Kentucky, Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, good football team there, by the way. Um, Northeast Alabama, L.A. I'm going to guess that's lower Alabama. Uh, Cincinnati, Vancouver. Yes, Vancouver is indeed gorgeous. Um, she grew up at Vancouver Island back when people could afford to live there, normal people. Uh, Texas, um, Ohio, New Jersey, um, the U.K. Who else? Let's have an interesting conversation today. Park, Park Rapids, Minnesota, College Station, Texas. We got an Aggie who has joined us here. Roll Tide, Aggie. <laughs> you know, I've never been in College Station, Texas, but I do know a former Texas A&M coach, Gene Stallings, who was also the coach of the University of Alabama, and what a guy. He hosted me and his son at his home, and I really, really enjoyed that. Someone here, Mark Carpenter, says that um, we're helping to turn him into a deep thinker. I hope so. I hope, again, to give you sort of a grid, um, a methodology for thinking about some of the big issues. Uh, not so much, it's not so much that I want to tell you, you know, what to think on a, on a specific issue, but how to think about any given issue. So applying some of what, what we learn in these podcasts and um, that we do as we go about discussing them that assists you. Um, North Dakota State, yes, uh, North Dakota State, uh, they've been a, they, they have been the Alabama of what used to be called Division II. And, uh, or maybe, is it Division Three? Maybe they're Division Three. Anyway, it doesn't matter. They've been kicking a lot of butt. That's for sure. Someone here says they met Coach Stallings. Yes, Coach Stallings is, uh, is a, a real character. I used to use his voice on the introduction to this show because he would come on and he would say, well, Larry, he's my favorite player. <laughs> um, North Dakota State University Bison. So, I got to tell you, the American South, which is where I am, which is where I am, it's uh, it's probably 75 degrees right now. It's a nice, nice breeze. Um, I love the American South, and when I'm traveling, I try to always be back home in time for the spring. And it is because I love, you know, our summers are hot as Hades. But, um, and I love our summers too. But, but our springs and our falls are gorgeous. And as much as possible, I try not to travel too much during that period of time because I like to be home. I want to enjoy uh, the beautiful weather. I want to enjoy seeing everything turn green and the, um, uh, blooming. Um, it's wonderful. It really is. 75 is awesome, Ruby. Um, yes, for me, home is in Alabama. Uh, sweet home, Alabama. I think I let my cigar die on me here. Um, so, 
What are some issues that are on your mind? Spring is beautiful, especially if you love pollen. You know, here everything turns yellow. I mean, your automobile is just caked in pollen. There's just so much of it. I don't have allergies, so it doesn't bother me. One of my boys suffers pretty severely from allergies, so it does bother him quite a lot. And uh, he is not a fan of, um, of this time of year. What are some other things that are going on? Okay, here's a question here. Do you think the Jews are so heavily targeted because they were chosen by God, or did God choose the Jews because he saw that these people would be hated? Um, I don't think it has to do with either one, um, uh, at least not at this stage. Uh, certainly the Lord said that they would be persecuted, and, uh, and they were. Um, what I find very strange is that so many uh, Jews that I know in the U.S., not all of them for sure, but so many of them um, uh, are almost anti-Israel. It's uh, it's kind of a strange thing. I, I don't know what to make of that. Not all of them, but many are, and many of them are supporters of the Biden administration, um, which I think uh, is not very supportive of Israel. And that's because the Biden administration reflects the policies, the views of Obama. Um, I wish we were much stronger supporters of Israel that I believe they have the right to exist and I think they have the right to self-determination and to self-defense. I feel very strongly um, about that and not, by the way, because I'm a dispensationalist. Uh, that's not the reason. I, I believe that because they're, they've been one of our, they're, they have been our strongest ally in the Middle East. Uh, and they're a democracy, and uh, for that reason, I think we we want to support them. Glad you like the view. Glad you're in, enjoying the view. I'll show you just a little bit more here. Seaplanes land and take off all along this lake. It's about 300 miles of coastline, maybe a little bit more. And they land all along here and um, are taking off on a regular basis, but today being a Sunday, it's a little bit more quiet. It's mostly flat families and boats. You see kids, you know, riding up and down on intertubes and so on. The noise that you hear uh, out here is typically, they're, they're typically happy noises. And that's the kind of noises that I like. We have somebody from Saskatchewan here. Um, she says that her husband is originally from Nigeria. Where in Nigeria is he from, KLM? Keith here says it's a spiritual battle. Um, yes, it is. Sean says he likes his view better than what he has to look at in Manchester. <laughs> uh, Manchester, uh, United Kingdom. I will bet, um, Sean, I would imagine that that is the case. I wanna see if I get an answer to the question of where in Nigeria uh, her husband is um, from. Kogi State, okay. I have been in Plateau State, uh, Nigeria, and um, it was during um, a time of uh, a lot of violence, which of course is throughout much of Nigeria's history. I um, was, uh, was there at the invitation of a Nigerian bishop who had invited me there to speak. It was a dear friend, and I gotta tell you, some of the, some of the bravest Christians I've ever met um, are in Nigeria. And um, some of the greatest hospitality that I've ever experienced is in Nigeria. Very, very brave people. Got someone here from Texas. Someone else here from the UK. Um, Joss. Yes, I was in Joss, Nigeria. Um, I sure was, and uh, and then went to some outlying areas to do a conference for for um, some Christians in Nigeria, which was uh, which was very interesting. Um, they feared for my life there because you know I'm I'm uh, you know stand out. You just did not see any white people in that part of Nigeria, 
And, um, you know, once you, once you got out of Abuja, um, or Lagos, um, you know, you're, you're on your own and it's, you, you really risk, um, conflict with, depending on how far North you go with the Fulani herdsman militia and, um, the Boko, Boko Haram, both of which are, um, Muslim militia groups. Don't think any, don't think twice about killing. Uh, Christians, they've been doing it in large numbers um, for quite some time now. Uh, let's see here. You have somebody here asked me about the uh, all the uh, the. Gosh, is is it too much to call it hysteria over the eclipse? Uh, maybe I am just not very hip. I it just hasn't really captured my attention that much. Um, I have a friend who lives in a part of Texas that's deemed to be the best place to see the eclipse. And they're being told that they're going to have, um, you know, huge traffic and uh, they need to be aware that there's going to be a huge influx of people coming into town for the eclipse and uh, they should plan on um, longer commute times and restaurants and hotels but frankly that surprised me i was very surprised to hear that um for me i just i guess i just don't see it as that big of a deal but maybe maybe i'm missing something somebody here from the philippines i've been in the philippines speaking of traffic the worst <laughs> the worst traffic i've ever experienced in my life was in manila right around in a jeepney as they call them and uh manila traffic is uh is terrible um, only thing comparable to it, I think, is um, traffic in, say, uh, Delhi, India, which is uh, also also horrible. Somebody here says, Bridget says that uh, schools are canceled tomorrow because of the eclipse. Wow, that shocks me. I am really surprised. But probably a, probably a day that kids are not in the hands of public school teachers is a good day. It's probably a good day. Um, let's see. Oh, Linda here says that she lives in Ohio and they uh, are closing the insurance office tomorrow. That does strike me as weird. Why would you do that? People get up and go to work. I mean, what's going on with that? Who was it who's saying a total eclipse of the heart or is it a total eclipse of the sun? Was it Bonnie Tyler who sang that? We'll probably will hear that song all day tomorrow in Endless Loop. <laughs> Colorado. Glad to see that Colorado is joining us. Bonnie Raitt. Thank you. Thank you, Gail. That's who sang that. I, uh, was it Bonnie Raitt? Because it seems, wasn't that, wasn't that song like the 1980s? Does she go back that far? I thought it was Bonnie Tyler. So Bonnie Tyler, can somebody Google that? Can somebody look that up? <laughs> okay, Phyllis says, okay, I have some people here confirming that it was Bonnie Tyler. Yeah, I think it was Bonnie Tyler. But Bonnie Raitt is like the 90s and early 2000s, really. I think I think a total eclipse of the heart was uh, like the early 80s, maybe the late 70s, somewhere in there. Um, it's one of those songs that was played everywhere and would drive you nuts, but that song will be um, probably be out tomorrow. So others here are confirming for me. Uh, we got somebody joining us from Manitoba. <laughs> the song lasts about the same amount of time as the eclipse. That is true. That song goes on forever. Oh, Bonnie Raitt wrote the lyrics. Okay. Well, that's interesting. 76 here says... Uh, Jeannie, um, that is uh, that is interesting. I I did not know that. Bonnie Raitt must be, be must be a lot older than I than I realized. So let me uh, let me bring up a topic with you that I'm curious to know what you guys um, think about. Um, well, here's a good question. I'd love to come back to. I'm Native American, born and raised on a reservation. A lot of natives uh, hate Christianity because some of the things done in the past by some Christians, any tips on reaching them? You know, I've done some work 
on um, some Indian reservations or with people from Indian reservations in South Dakota, Pine Ridge, Lower Brule, um, to name a couple. And boy, I got to tell you, those were some really, really tough um, circumstances. Those were, um, those were that, that was hard ministry. That was really, really hard ministry. And I'd love to tell you that I have um, some great tips. I would just simply repeat what I said the other day, and that is this. You got to get them in the Word. You want to get them in the Word. You don't want them to be, um, you don't want people, you, you can do this whether you intend to or not, but where it becomes, at least in someone else's mind, if not in yours, that they, they see you as coming with your politics, with your lifestyle, um, with uh, all these preconceived notions, and and it becomes them versus you, their personality versus your personality, their lifestyle versus your lifestyle. You don't want it to be that. You want it to be them. If it's to be adversarial, let them wrestle with Scripture. Let them wrestle with Scripture. Force them to get into Scripture so that it's not about what you think. Um, I always try to I always try to make very clear to people that the Bible is neutral ground for everyone. I don't own it. Republicans don't own it. Um, white people don't own it. Americans don't own it. Black people don't own it. Chinese don't own it. nobody owns it. Um, God has made Himself available to all, and if we're to have a relationship with Him, we have to meet Him there, and we have to humble ourselves in order to do that. And um, so I think sometimes when we're talking to people, they are reacting to what they perceive us to be. Ah, you're a Republican. Ah, you're an American. Ah, you're just a you're just a white guy, you know, or what have you. Whereas when you get them into Scripture, if you believe what the Bible says that God's word is as sharp as a two-edged sword, it has the power to penetrate hearts, to penetrate minds, and it gets them. Um, And it gets them into um, into a kind of um, dialogue with God, unwitting or not, and where they're they're ultimately, if they're resisting, they're resisting God, not you, not your personality, none of that. I love what uh, the Lord said to Samuel: "They've rejected me, not you, Samuel. They've rejected me, not you." That's that's an important thing there. Okay, so somebody says here that uh, uh, Bonnie Raitt was actually doing quite a lot of music in the 80s. I'm sorry, I, I was never a Bonnie Raitt fan, so I, I, can't, I can't really point to any, um, you know, any albums or anything that I really know of hers because I was in the 80s I was listening to something <laughs> completely different, and it definitely wasn't Bonnie, Bonnie Raitt. So I do have a topic that I'd like to discuss with you, and um, that's this. How do you guys? Somebody here from uh, somebody here from Sydney, Australia. Glad to have someone here from Sydney, Australia. I have not been in. Uh, I've been in Melbourne and I've been in Brisbane, but I have not been in uh, Sydney. I'd love to go there sometime. Question I have for you is this: uh, We're being joined by people from all over the world, so this is a kind of mini global conversation. And my question for you is: How do you go about? Or maybe there's a prior question. The prior question is this. Do you find it difficult in this day and time when we're seeing Western governments, and I include Australia in that. Australia is a, is a Western nation, not geographically, but they are culturally speaking. Are you finding it difficult um, to maintain a positive outlook on life, um, to... Um, you know, are you finding it difficult to not be depressed? Uh, I bump into so many people, it seems to me, are very depressed these days. And I'm curious to know how other people um, are, uh, you know, would, would say that that's true. Have I ever accidentally kissed a man? No. No, I haven't. So do you find that... Um, yeah, somebody here says, buy a dead cat. We, we call them dead squirrels. Dead squirrels are the little, you know, the little um, wind buffers. And I apologize if you're hearing a lot of um, a lot of wind yet. We will improve these, and we will get to a place where 
where our sound is a little bit better. We're still ex uh, experimenting with this platform and that's what we're doing today. But I am curious to know if you guys are having any difficulty maintaining you know, positive outlook. Um, do you find yourself feeling depressed? Do you find yourself in a state of anxiety about things going on in the world? Do you find your, that, that when you look at the news that it's something that sends you into a tailspin? Where are people as it relates to these kinds of things? Do you believe that, um, that there is, uh, that it's very, very difficult to maintain uh, a positive outlook? I'm curious to know. Hmm. Trying to read some of the comments and catch up. Somebody here from Metro Church. I, I'm, I'm wondering if that's the Metro Church where I occasionally speak um, from time to time. It's a possibility that that's the case. It says that I turned on subscribers only mode. Um, okay. Um, Okay, Gail says, uh, no depression here. God is on his throne. Very good. Um, Mary Michelle says, nope, I don't find that that's the case. Linda Kern says, not at all. I'm feeling an urgency to reach out uh, for Christ because time is getting so short. Very good. Um, Qmix says, uh, Matthew 24, 12, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of the most will grow cold. Bill West, I've gotten, gotten involved with a good church. I've gotten to make friends with some some people that's really helped with that depression. I was feeling um, alone, um, feeling a lone Christian for a while. Listen, this is really, really important. One of the reasons I want to build this community, um, this posse, is because I remember Rush Limbaugh, who, by the way, did a lot to launch my career. Um, but I remember Rush Limbaugh saying this, several times, but he said that um, his show, when he started it in the 80s, I think in Sacramento, California, he said that what he felt like he was able to do was connect conservatives who were all over the country who all felt that they were alone. And, uh, and then they discovered they weren't alone, that there were millions of other people just like them all over the place. And it was a huge encouragement to them to discover, I'm not the only person who thinks like this. There are other people who think like this. Uh, in fact, we might even be the majority. We're not, we're not, we're not the, um, the freaks that the left would want to make us out to be. Um, I want that to happen with the posse. And there are things that we're trying to create uh, on down the line. Uh, in order to facilitate that. But one of the places right now is a gathering place on YouTube. You can also meet me over on, uh, on Twitter, on X. Um, I'm somewhat active over there, although I'll say I've been off of social, I've been off of social media for a little more than two weeks now, and I'll probably continue to take a break from it for a little while. The, the team is managing that and running that, and they're doing a very good job of that. But there's a, there are ways for you to engage with other people and certainly going to church is one of them. Uh, belonging to the posse, uh, subscribing to this channel, to subscribing to what we're doing, subscribing over on uh, on Twitter, on X, will certainly enable you to. Uh, let's see here, Jessica says, uh, not because of the world, but because I want to do something about it. I can't uh, because uh, I barely work part time. I understand that. I feel depressed until I focus on the cross and trust God's plan. I mourn for my country, though. Uh, Bridget, that reflects my feeling. That reflects my feeling, too. I mourn for my country, too, because uh, I've grown up in the greatest country in the world. I've enjoyed uh, tremendous freedom, tremendous opportunities, and, um, and I want to fight for that. But above all, I want to fight for the gospel, because even if uh, my country is pulled out from under me, uh, like a rug, um, my hope rests on the uh, the most solid of foundations, and that's the person of Jesus Christ. Sean here says he goes for walks to clear his head. I don't blame him. That's a good thing to do. I sometimes come out to a place like this, or I maybe go for a bike ride or a drive or 
I sit on the porch, I read a book. Sometimes it's good just to pick up a novel or something. I'm very bad to do this. I think I mentioned this in a, in a, in a previous podcast, but I, I have often been accused of being a workaholic. And part of the reason for that is because I do love my work. So in a sense, my work becomes a little bit of a hobby for me. But I've tried to, I, relaxation for me is very hard. I'm a very, I'm a very driven personality and I'm a very um, restless personality. I think the Lord has used that um, uh, for good, but there comes a place where it's important that you actually get downtime and that you rest your mind, that you rest your you know, your body, that you rest your spirit, that you restore, that you, you actually will be more productive. And um, I, what I've been bad to do is that during my downtime, I say, you know what, I'll go read a book, but then I go make sure that I read a book that's related to my work. And sometimes it's just important that you just go pick up a, you know, just a novel that's unrelated um, to anything and it's just fun and entertaining and takes your mind off of things. And uh, so I think I think that's important. Uh, lockdowns, somebody here says uh, um, that they're not feeling depressed now, but they apparently were during the lockdowns and uh, the whole COVID thing. Um, I understand that. Uh, that makes that makes good sense. Uh, someone here says abide and fear not. Jesus Christ is King. I agree with that. The way the weight of evil feels like a huge weight on my shoulders. Um, I agree with that. I think a lot of people um, feel that way. I've gotten involved with a great church, Shadow Mountain uh, Community Church. That's good. I'm glad you're involved in there. Hey, somebody here from Chicago. Chicago. Wow, man. What is the place? I think it's called Geno's East. Gosh, I love their. Um, uh, gosh, I love their pizza. And then another place there is it called Giordano's? Is is that right? Giordano's Pizza? Man, I I could eat at those places every day. They're great. Um, spending as much time as I do in Rome, I eat a lot of really good pizza. But in Rome, they don't make the big thick pizzas. That's a Chicago style pizza. And um, those two restaurants, I'm sure there are others, but not being a native, I just go with the uh, the recommendations at Giordano's and. Uh, uh, Gino's East are fantastic. Somebody here says staying positive while sensing the rise of negative vibes. Um, and, you know, it's hard. There are ups and downs, swings. I get that. JD says, hey, I'm rocking and rolling over here. JD is my producer. He does a good job. Get, give JD a shout out. JD Thompson, you'll see him there in the, uh, the comments. JD does a great job. Um, I show up with the content. And JD is the guy who is uh, is behind all that. I mean, he's not the only one. There are a bunch of other guys um, too. But JD is the JD is the guy who is um, you know it's synced that it, that it all on the tech side gets produced and is well done. So please give a shout out to JD. That he really does a terrific job. And by the way, he is. What are you, JD? JD, you're you're Gen Z, aren't you? And he's Gen Z, and he has a work ethic. I mean, imagine that. He's like a unicorn. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Total Clips of the Heart was written by a man named Jim Stein for Bonnie Tyler. Okay. You know, we we are we're learning an awful lot about Bonnie Tyler and Total Clips of the Heart. Let's see. faithful and depend on the Holy Spirit every minute of the day, but the wickedness of the world does disturb me, and I do feel sad about um, world events. Yeah, I would, you should be sad about world events. It's appropriate um, to feel that way. Um, I wouldn't have you be a Pollyanna. That's that's not who we are. That's not what we want to be. Um, Jeremiah, you know, it's interesting that Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel were all they were all contemporaries, and while Daniel and Ezekiel were taken into captivity, Jeremiah remained in Jerusalem to prophesy against the evil uh, in that city. And um, I dare say that um, some of some of his work he found very depressing, but I'm also sure that he found comfort in the Lord. 
read the Psalms. I would really strongly um, encourage you to read the Psalms. It wasn't until real travail entered my life that I discovered the Psalms, and boy, did I ever discover them. Um, because you might, you might until you've really experienced um, some kind of real struggle in your life, be it it's a personal struggle with sin, be it um, physical struggle or trauma, as in my case, be it um, people who are trying to do you harm, which I've experienced as well, um, you, you might not be able to identify with the emotions that David is expressing there until you've gone through some um, valley of death of your own. And once you do, uh, the Psalms are something to hold on to. They really are. The, the Psalms are great. And it's not that every one will work for you in a, in, in a given moment. Sometimes David is expressing um, concern or outrage or love or um, appreciation for something that in a given moment you're maybe not there. But you might find some others that, that really are. Yeah, I agree with Bill West here. Um, he's saying, in effect, that he... Um, he finds that um, with with um, this show and maybe with these types of things uh, that he's discovering there are other people who are seeing the same things that he was saying. And that's that's part of what we want to achieve with the posse is that you don't feel alone as you begin to you begin to recognize there are other people who are seeing some of the things, same things that you are seeing. Um, let's see. Gail says here, very sad to see the country I grew up in is most likely gone forever. You know, maybe that may be true. Um, we know that it'll eventually be true because um, the earth will eventually melt like a marshmallow. It'll explode like the Death Star. I mean, that's that's kind of the uh, the biblical message. However, we don't know that that's now. And um, what I do know is that my calling is to engage the world. And uh, I'm to engage the world. I love the way I love the way uh, Chuck Colson put it in his book, Loving God, a book that was given to me upon my high school high school graduation, in which he said this. He said, um, um, "God demands our our God demands our obedience, no matter what the circumstance, and no matter how unknown the outcome. You and I don't control outcomes. That's up to the Lord." Um, but we do control our own actions, and uh, the Lord wants us to engage. Let's see. Yeah, someone here says that if you um, you live near Grace Church in Sun Valley, California, you can attend uh, John MacArthur's church. John MacArthur deserves a lot of kudos, if only because he was a guy that when, um, I mean, somebody I saw, somebody recently saying that, I don't know who it is, but was saying that John MacArthur was wrong in saying that we don't engage politically. I, I, maybe John MacArthur said that. I don't know. But John MacArthur engaged in the political realm probably more than any pastor in America when he challenged Gavin. Okay, hopefully I'm not losing you guys. It says here that it is Giordano's. So good. I love Giordano's. Giordano's is awesome. And Gino's East, yes great pizza. In fact, as I'm sitting here right now, I'm thinking I'd love to be in Chicago eating eating at one of those pizza restaurants. Yes, let's see here. What else here? Erie, Pennsylvania. Um, someone here is talking about, you know, uh, delicious subs in, uh, in New York. Yep, for sure. Lots of good Italian in New York. Uh, Linda here says JD is, is a rare dude. He is a rare dude. And he is a dude, by the way. I want to be clear. He's not. JD isn't a, formerly a woman who became a dude. He's a dude. He's a dude through and through. Uh, see me says when problems hearing you. Yeah, I apologize. We'll try to fix that next time. Um, I, I wanted to come down here because I wanted to give you a view. You see the boats going by out there, and uh, because you can start to see, we're getting we're getting on towards um, 
sunset. Not there yet, but um, someone here says that they're concerned about their grandchildren. Um, yes, good reason to fear for that. Uh, all the more reason that we need to believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to believe in uh, the power of God. Listen, I would be very depressed if I were not a Christian. Uh, I mean, what hope would I have if I were not a Christian? I would have none. Um, I, there'd be no meaning in life. Um, there would be no... Uh, I would believe in no ultimate justice. I would believe in no soul. I would not believe in eternity. But I do believe those things. And I do believe that, uh, that the one who said, let there be light, is on our side. And in the end, we win. In the end, we win. We just don't know what it's going to be like between here and there. Someone uh, here says um, they struggled uh, for forgiveness with their dad for years, then finally realized that trying to forgive him without involving God was really, really impossible. I agree with that, too. Read Corey Ten Boom. Um, or speak to people who've been through real challenges, you know, in their lives as it relates to um, things that they've had to learn how to um, forgive or change. Um, I understand that, Phyllis. That in an election year, and we live among people who are deliberately causing disruption. And, and I should probably tell you this, they want you to feel anxiety. That's their goal. Um, stay, you know, take breaks from the news every now and then because it's meant to keep you in a constant state of fear, anxiety, hysteria. Uh, take a break from, from some of that stuff, from social media and, and, and whatnot, uh, from those things that serve to, um, to really depress you. By that, again, I don't mean be a Pollyanna and pretend that there's nothing going on in the world. That's not what I mean. You want to stay informed. But... You want to stay informed about news that is actionable, you know, things that you can do something about where you can engage your politicians or in your local community or, or your church. And uh, rather than just constantly feeding yourself uh, negative messaging, it, uh, it won't, be, won't be good for you. It won't be good for your health. Um, let's see here. Thank you, Ruby. Yeah, Christina says she would be depressed if she were not a Christian, and I'm with you on that. Corey Ten Boom. The weight of knowledge, a hard load to carry when you carry the load and don't acquire the knowledge. Um, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Um, judgment, if you're a Christian, should be something that should be a doctrine that doesn't frighten you. It should be something that encourages you, uh, really. Um, judgment is a good thing. Hell, by the way, is a good thing. Uh, I think even among Christians, hell is uh, thought of and often taught as, I don't know that anybody ever calls it evil, but where it's spoken of in, in such terrifying terms that Christians never think of it for what it is, and that is a good thing. As John Milton um, said, he said something to this effect that, um, that hell created good for the destruction of evil. And that's the purpose of hell. It's, it's ultimate justice. It will play a role in bringing about justice. And um, if you've ever been deeply, deeply wronged by someone, you, you pray for their repentance. Um, you pray um, that the Lord forgives them. You pray that they find Jesus Christ. However, um, you also aren't seeking to take revenge on them because you recognize that vengeance belongs to the Lord. And, um, and we are all on a collision course to meet the Lord. And as C.S. Lewis put it, that will either be a moment of either inexpressible joy or one of indescribable terror, depending on um, the decisions that you've made regarding his existence or non-existence. Sharon asked, when are we going to be doing the, uh, the book club? Be patient with us, Sharon. We're still, uh, there's still a lot of stuff going on. We're building the platform. We're building a, um, an additional platform where even if on YouTube, you know, notifications, whatnot, aren't going out, um, you'll get them via other means. 
And um, so I think that'll be coming. But there, right now, there are just so many things that we're trying to um, to get going. And I've been doing a lot of interviews lately that I think you're going to see coming up. Um, a really interesting interview that I did with Dr. Robert Epstein. Dr. Robert Epstein is a, um, a fascinating guy. He's a Harvard PhD. He's a researcher. And he and his team have been doing um, research on um, election interference um, that has been done primarily by the left. And we'll save that interview for you probably a little, a little closer to election time. But Robert Epstein is a fascinating guy. And here's the interesting thing. He's a lifelong Democrat. So when the left accuses him, <laughs> you know, being some kind of Trump pawn, you know, or something to that effect, it's just laughable. I mean, here's a guy who admits um, that he voted for, you know, let's say, you know, the Clintons um, uh, for Obama, but who also says there's massive um, election rigging that is going on. So that's one guy that I recently interviewed. I like Robert. He is an honest guy. He's an honest researcher. He's a highly intelligent man. Uh, Jason Whitlock of Blaze TV, if you're familiar with him. He was a former ESPN writer and now does a lot of public commentary on a lot more than just sports. Um, a guy who gave his life to Christ. He's a, he's a really interesting guy. Jason is, um, I will interview tomorrow, um, Lawrence Fox. And uh, Lawrence Fox is a very well-known, um, well, he's an actor. He comes from a very famous family of actors. His father is James Fox. His uncle is uh, Edward Fox. And uh, his, is it his cousin? I think it's his cousin is, uh, is Amelia Fox. Um, I have been a fan of, um, of Lawrence Fox's work for some time. But he has really caused a firestorm in Britain because this is a guy who just refuses to bow the knee. Uh, he wouldn't do it during COVID, um, and uh, he, uh, he hasn't done it since. And Britain is much farther gone than is the United States. He lives in London, and I bumped into him a couple of months ago in a hotel lobby in London. And it just so happens he was already following me on Twitter, and I was following him. And I introduced myself and I said, hey, you know, we follow each other on Twitter. Love to get you on the show. And he's like, let's do it. So um, you're going to you're gonna find him interesting. My friend Eric Metaxas had him on the show. We'll post that for you. Um, conversations with, there's some others that are suddenly kind of going out of my head um, that I have been talking to recently. Beckett Cook, if you don't follow Beckett Cook on um on Twitter, um, you should. Um, Beckett Cook has a book um, about how he came out of homosexuality. Uh, Beckett Cook was deeply involved in the Hollywood, uh, what do you want to call it, the kind of the Hollywood in crowd, and um, was very involved in that lifestyle. And he tell, told me the other day, it's just this awesome story of here he was in Hollywood at a coffee shop with his gay friends, and he said, and sitting next to them were a couple of kids who were having a Bible study. And he and his friends decided to engage them just a little bit, just by way of maybe even mocking them. I think we're gonna, we're gonna have him. You know, well, I say we're gonna have him. I just had him, so you're gonna you're gonna have an interview um, with him. And we're in the process of working on this documentary about uh, what's going on in Central and South America, where I just was. So we'll be able to tell you a little bit about that. But these are all these are all excellent guests who have very powerful stories to tell and i think you're going to enjoy that very much let's see um sean here says he lost his wife after 45 years oh wow lost my wife after 45 years on uh 14 of march sean i'm very very sorry um to hear that um i don't i don't know the depth of your grief and i don't pretend to know um the depth of your grief, but may the Lord um, comfort you and remind you that he loves you and um, remind you that if you know Jesus Christ, you're going to see her again. You're going to see her again. Is there any greater hope than that? You will see her again. So, um, Sean, 
Hang in there, brother. Um, hang in there. Got another boat about to go by here. Any other questions before I decide to go in? And, you know, I think I might watch a good movie tonight. Is there any, any movie recommendations that you guys have? Sean says he has wonderful family and children. That's fantastic, Sean. That's fantastic. Again, I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, that kind of pain is real, and there's, there's no magic bullet um, to immediately getting over it. I point you, I point you to the, to the Psalms, Sean. Go and look in the Psalms, which address real gritty issues of this life, and loss is definitely one of them. Ah, somebody here said they just watched Braveheart. You know, I haven't seen Braveheart in years, but I love, I love, Braveheart. you know, I've, I've been to Abbey Craig in, um, in Scotland, which is where you have, um, the Wallace monument. And it's, you know, it kind of, it's kind of, it's this tower. It's sort of like the, uh, the Washington monument. You work your way up in it and, um, his broadsword, this claymore, sits up there. And, you know, William Wallace was much bigger than um, Mel Gibson. I think Mel Gibson's like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, William Wallace was 6 feet 7 inches tall with a shock of red hair. He was definitely a much, much, much bigger man than, uh, than Mel Gibson, though Mel Gibson played him marvel marvelously in the, uh, the movie. But the sword that they have up there, William Wallace's sword, 6 feet long. It's crazy. Six feet long, and I gave a lecture at uh, at Bannockburn and at Sterling. Sterling, there's no bridge there now. Um, it was actually called the Battle of Sterling Bridge, and in the movie they decided it would be too expensive to build the bridge, too complicated to film, so they just called it the Battle of Sterling in the uh, in the film. But the bridge actually played an incredibly important part in that. Let's see, Battersea, London, you know. Noel, um, this is interesting. Battersea, Battersea has really become a hip neighborhood in London. I mean, it's it's it gradually is becoming a more and more expensive neighborhood to live in. Uh, Battersea is kind of an interesting place. Uh, when I was a student in London, how many years ago now? More than thirty years ago. Uh, speaks to my age now. But when I was a, a student in London, in the UK, um, pursuing degrees in uh, European history. Um, Battersea was not a nice neighborhood in those days. It was okay, but it was nothing like what it's becoming now. It's pretty pretty incredible what's happening there. Um, other, and, and by the way, I have loved London, um, less so these days because of what, um, what Khan has done to London. Um, what Sunak is doing to the UK. But I grew up very much an Anglophile, and that's because of my mother, by the way. My, my mom, being a Canadian from, they don't call it British Columbia for nothing. And here's the funny thing, the, uh, the colonists, my Canadian relatives were more British, more British than the British. <laughs> so I grew up, you know, eating grits uh, because my father was a Southerner eating uh, bacon and sausage and sawmill gravy and all pecan pie and all the good Southern things, but also eating crumpets, uh, having high tea, uh, eating uh, eggs out of egg cups, uh, you name it. I still had a lot of the British traditions incorporated into my life. So I grew up a, an Anglophile and an American patriot. That's an interesting mix, isn't it? Let's see. Somebody here says that it looks like Lake Martin in Tallapoosa. Well, there might be a reason for that. Yeah, it's not the same London anymore. And uh, that's what I was getting at is that the London that I was uh, was a student in all those years ago was still, was still an English city. It just doesn't feel English at all anymore. And, uh, and they've, they've ruined it. Um, and it's almost impossible to get around by automobile anymore because they've created all these stupid bike lanes. And um, 
uh, the rules, the regulations, what you can and can't say or do anymore, unless, of course, you're a Muslim. And um, it just isn't the same city that it, that it used to be. And uh, that's too bad because it was my favorite my favorite city in the world. Somebody asked me here if my mom served peanut butter and cucumber sandwiches. My mother would know better than to try to serve that to me because uh, a cucumber is just not a thing that I much care for. But you know, you you might have more like the the um, the little little uh, what do you call them? Little cucumber and um, cheese, you know, sandwiches that uh, uh, that that you might have. But yes, I grew up very much with the English traditions. And what's funny is when I went to when I went to Britain for the first time, I discovered that my Canadian relatives were far more British. <laughs> they were far more British. I mean, I, I grew up with, my, my grandparents had pictures of the queen on the wall, Queen Elizabeth II on the wall. You, you go to Britain and almost nobody had that. But anyway, that was, uh, it was a different time. Noel says, uh, London is falling, Larry, but we have hope. People are waking up, even Dawkins and the atheists are questioning what's been thrown away. Sadly, the ruin is going. The uh, the podcast that I think we have coming out on Tuesday is my response to Richard Dawkins. I've known I've known Dawkins reasonably well um, for maybe 17 years now. I can't claim that we're friends. We have been friendly at times and have um, certainly been unfriendly at other times, but uh, not not my intention um, to be that. Dawkins can be, uh, he's a bit of a curmudgeon. But what he had to say that gathered so much attention, uh, he said before, this is not new. Uh, this is something um, that, that he said, um, has been saying for a number of years now. And I like to think I had some role in stimulating him saying it, um, because I do think that he has recognized from some of our pri private conversations that Christianity has played an extremely important role um, in uh, the development of the West. Um, the West as we know it, even his science, is based on the Christian faith. Now, he wouldn't go as far as to say that or to acknowledge that, but it absolutely is true. And I have to tell you this, this is pretty funny. Years ago, I was moderating a debate with him at Oxford University at the Oxford Museum of Natural History. And uh, it was a debate that I'd organized there, and I decided that I wanted to do it um, that I wanted to do it at the Oxford Museum of Natural History because that is where you can find this online. You'll find it on my channel because that's where Huxley and Wilberforce um, debated in, uh, that's Thomas Huxley, not Aldous Huxley, Thomas Huxley, who I think was the, was he the father of Aldous Huxley? Anyway, they're related. And uh, uh, Thomas Huxley debated um, Bishop Wilberforce, not William Wilberforce, but Bishop Wilberforce in 1860. Very, very famous debate on evolution. So I thought, this place is of historical significance. I'm going to put Dawkins and Lennox in debate there, and I'm going to put them right under the T-Rex. There's this big, you know, incredible T-Rex there. And uh, I'm going to put them right under the T-Rex. Let me get up because my back is starting to bother me. And I'll put right under the T-Rex there where they can, um, where they debate each other. And then I will interview them there. And uh, so I did. And Lennox was just speaking off the top of his head. If you don't know who I'm talking about, he's a good friend of mine. I've interviewed him on Ideas Have Consequences. And on the podcast, um, more than once, I think. Um, I'll have him back on again. Right now he's, he's uh, suffering from shingles. So please say a prayer for him. He's been in a lot of pain lately. Lennox, speaking off the top of his head, said, Richard, you know, this was the very topic that was you know, being debated at, at the moment as to whether or not Christianity really played any kind of an important role in the development of science. He said, um, and I'm paraphrasing here, Richard, I mean, the very museum that we're sitting here was built with funds from the Bible Society. So, I mean, to say that Christianity is anti-science is just absurd. Um, um, science, the rise of science was due to Christianity. Um, not your kind of science that is, you know, that is, uh, has a political and social uh, agenda, but actual science is no enemy of the Christian faith. And it was the Christian faith that gave rise um, to um, science. Well, Richard denied that that was true, and he said it was completely false, and the audience kind of laughed at, at Lennox, like Lennox was some kind of fool. 
Well, Melanie Phillips, writing for the Times of London, she may have written this in The Spectator because she writes for both, or did. She, um, she did a little research after that debate and she discovered what Lennox said was true. <laughs> and so she pointed out that Richard Dawkins was completely wrong in making that assertion in that debate. And of course it caused him much embarrassment because he had asserted it as a fact that Lennox had just made some kind of absurd statement. And the fact of the matter is he'd done nothing um, of the sort. But Richard has been interesting to follow in a, in a lot of this. My own conversations with him have been very, uh, very interesting. He recently trashed me um, in an article um, saying that I'd mischaracterized him in uh, in a video that I'd put online, which he had watched. He'd paid some close attention um, to. And anyway, I reached out to him and we had a conversation about it. And uh, to his credit, he withdrew the accusation. He, has, he hasn't withdrawn it publicly, but at least he did privately. But this is what we're dealing with here. So I've had um, shingles as well, um, Sean. Shingles are pretty rough. I had them in my ear and on the side of my face and on, on my scalp. And uh, they're, uh, they're, they're pretty rough. Do I kayak or canoe on the lake? You know, Sharon, I, I haven't, but I've thought about it. I've wondered if I should, if that would be really good exercise um, for me to do that. I would like to do that. Um, but I, but I just haven't gotten around to do it. And part of that is because, um, part of that is because sometimes, by the way, somebody says, you got them in your ear. Yes, I did. And that's why sometimes, you know, during the podcast, you might notice I have a tendency to sort of play with my ear just, uh, just a little bit. And, uh, it's just become almost kind of habit, habit forming, but, um, but shingles are awful. They're awful. Yeah. But it would hurt to put my face down on a pillow. I mean, that's, that's how much that's how much they uh, they hurt. The only reason I haven't done it with a kayak um, or a canoe is because I think I would two reasons. One is they're insanely expensive these days. They've probably doubled in price in the last five years. And the other reason is I don't want to make that kind of investment until I've had a chance to sort of do it out here and to know whether or not I would like it. I, I definitely try to stay in shape as best I can, but because my body is so broken, I have I have so many um, awful injuries that still kind of blag me a little bit. I would want it, before I make that kind of investment, I would want to know that it was a good investment. I don't want to go and you know, spend that kind of money on something and then discover it just kind of sits around as, uh, is unused. Jenny here, um, excuse me, Jeannie here says that um, she read my book Around the World in 80 Days and loved it. Thank you so much, Jeannie. I really appreciate that. I want that book to be an encouragement to people. And um, as I do with my other books too, and I hope you'll, I hope you'll, uh, uh, hope you'll read them. Shingles are adult chicken pox. Yeah, well, whatever they are, they're terrible. And, uh, and I'll definitely tell you, they're way worse than I remember chicken pox being. Thing with chicken pox was, you know, the way, you know, it embarrassed you when you were a kid. Um, and uh, because, you know, you had pox and that's no fun. Who likes that? So anyway, um, there's some pretty exciting things that we're going to be doing in the uh, the coming weeks and months. And uh, and I look forward to um, sharing them with you. Do you see the sun? Can you, can you see the sun in the background? Um, JD has told me that there is a way for me to turn every time when I try to do my phone this way. I don't. Yeah, it says uh, it says not allowed. It, YouTube prefers that I do the video in portrait mode rather than in landscape mode. And he's JD told me how to do it. I have to change some kind of settings in order to do it. But right now, YouTube won't allow me to do that. But if they did, I would want you to see that. Look at that. Let that be an encouragement to your soul. Is that not awesome? Look at that. I don't know about you, but beauty is very, very important to my life. It's very important to my, um, to my psyche. Um, it's uh, uh, very important to my emotional well-being. I value beauty in my life. I value it in nature. I value it uh, in uh, the beautiful things around me. And I'm so fortunate because my lovely wife, she 
she works very hard. She, I mentioned Edith Schaefer, I think, in the previous live. The previous life. <laughs> I don't have a previous life. I am, I'm not Hindu. At the previous live event, uh, mentioned Edith Schaefer, and Edith Schaefer has written a book um, called, I think, I think it's called The Hidden Art of Homemaking or something like that. And uh, Lori has consulted her many times, but about bringing beauty uh, into your home and making the effort to bring real beauty into your home. And, uh, and that's something you should do. And so this morning, um, she went to the trouble to serve coffee on a silver coffee service, which was so nice and so beautiful. And we enjoyed the, uh, the beauty of God's creation. And, you know, life can't be like that all the time, but on those occasions that you can, take advantage of it. Uh, because um, this this kind of this kind of thing here, this will make your heart sing. Truly, it will make your heart sing. And uh, it's one of the reasons that I love the American South. The left can continue to uh, malign the South. They can continue to malign places like Alabama. I say have at it because uh, it's uh, it's like the uh, the Vikings supposedly naming the real Iceland, Greenland, and the real Greenland, Iceland, um, kept people away. And, uh, well, as far as I'm concerned, um, we'll just keep beautiful Alabama to ourselves. It's been a real pleasure to be with you. I hope you're all doing really great. Thank you for your patience as we kind of figure out how to do these things, uh, with a little bit more tech savvy as we move forward. Um, be sure to subscribe um, to the newsletter. The newsletter is incredibly important because it's via, via the newsletter that we can communicate with you without, you know, any interruption from any other source that might be trying to censor us. And that is, I think JD will put it up here in just a second, but I think it's join.larrytaunton.com. Join.larrytaunton.com. And that's T A U N. T O N. Yes, uh, they put it up here. Join dot Larry com. Please, all of you, go and subscribe there because it's incredibly important. That way we can stay in contact with you and make you aware of things that are coming. And also be ready that this Tuesday, at roughly, it's usually at 8 a.m., but sometimes the uploads take a little bit longer and there's uh, there are technical issues. Um, you have to forgive me, my camera is shaking so badly, and that is because I have a spinal cord injury and my hands shake. <laughs> and um, I have a hard time making things stand still. So people think I'm nervous when I'm speaking publicly because my hands shake. <laughs> and it's just because I have a spinal cord injury. But anyway, um, on Tuesday at 8 a.m., the latest podcast will drop, and uh, we want to see you guys there. So listen, hope it's been great. Love to hear from people all around the world. You guys have a wonderful evening or morning or afternoon, wherever you are. And I depart with this. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies.